This aircraft is equipped with a simulated environmental control system, allowing the user to learn the essentials of passenger comfort while operating the aircraft. This adds a substantial workload and should not be underestimated, especially in this aircraft. Cabin temperature is calculated distinctly from the outside air temperature, and the walls of the cabin are insulated, so it takes time for the cabin temperature to equalize with the outside air temperature. The cabin will also heat itself beyond the outside air temperature during warm and sunny conditions, and slowly equalize after sunset. There are several ways to monitor the temperature of the cabin in this aircraft beginning with the two LEDs located within the pilot's primary field of view. They illuminate when the cabin is either uncomfortably hot or cold, and draw the pilot's attention to the cabin temperature monitor on the right-hand side of the panel. The temperature can also be monitored from the new tablet interface. The temperature of the cabin can always be passively equalized with the outside air temperature by the ram air, the ventilation fans, or opening the doors and windows. You can increase the rate of equalization either by increasing airspeed or turning on the electric ventilation fans. Before we talk about active heating or cooling, you have to understand that the only way air can enter the cabin during flight is either through the ram air box in the front of the aircraft or through the pressurization check valves which come from either the turbochargers in the reciprocating engine aircraft or the bleed air in the turbine aircraft. This air enters the so-called cabin air plenum, which is a staging area for the air before it's either heated or cooled. When operating the aircraft on the ground in pleasant weather, or when unpressurized, you must pull out the cabin air pull handle, which opens a valve at the front of the ram air box. A subsequent check valve prevents pressurized air flowing backwards from the plenum out the ram air inlet. Once we have air in the plenum, we need to either heat it or cool it. Cooling is accomplished through a vapor cycle cooling system, more commonly known as an air conditioner. The air conditioning compressor is attached to the right-hand engine through a clutch, which only operates at sufficient RPM. So if you're trying to condition the cabin on the ground, you might have to bump up your right-hand throttle. When the air conditioner is running, a condenser scoop opens wide on the right-hand engine nacelle. When the landing gear comes up, the scoop closes part way. Active heating for the cabin is supplied in one of two ways. There's a combustion air heater in the front of the aircraft, which is an avgas powered furnace. It's not present in the turbine powered version of the aircraft. Heating can also come from the pressurization air, whether that be from the turbochargers or the turbine bleed air. When we turn on the combustion heater, we'll see the accompanying blower fan come to life, the igniter spark, and fuel start to flow from the left tank into the heater. This might work great on the ground, but the combustion air heater is not powerful enough to supply all the warm air that we need when flying at 30,000 feet. For this reason, we have two pull handles on the panel labeled air temp pull to increase. These handles close valves in the wing route that pass cool air over the pressurization air intercoolers. The resulting warmer air enters the cabin air plenum, supplementing the operation of the combustion heater. It's important to keep these valves closed when operating in mild weather or else the cabin vents could become dangerously overheated. Below these two pull handles are two more red handles labeled pressurization air pull to shut off. They close valves between the pressurization air source and the cabin air plenum. The primary purpose of these valves is to isolate each engine from the cabin air in the event that they start producing poisonous carbon monoxide gas. They can also be used to check the pressurization from each engine independently during your run-up. If either engine or the combustion heater begins to produce carbon monoxide, both valves should be closed immediately and the combustion heater disabled until the source can be identified. On the tablet interface, the source of the carbon monoxide will be identified with a gray gradient. As a final note on temperature control, 
The temperature controller's mode can be seen on the tablet. In either automatic mode, the controller will try to maintain the desired cabin temperature set by the cabin temp knob. If it's unable to do so, the text on the screen will turn red. In auto cooling mode, this simply means the air conditioner is running at full capacity. In auto heating mode, it should signal that it's time to pull out the intercooler bypass handles to supplement the combustion air heater. In either manual mode, the temperature controller will be bypassed, and the cabin will simply heat up or cool down as quickly as possible. The cabin temperature controller is notoriously failure prone, so you may find yourself using this mode. There are also some elements of the pressurization system displayed on this screen. In the bottom left hand corner is a vertical graph depicting the aircraft's pressure altitude, the cabin's pressurization altitude, and the pressure differential between the two. If the cabin altitude is allowed to climb too high for too long, the blood oxygen concentration of its occupants may begin to decline. On the ground, a normal reading is 99%. In the air, anything above 95 is normal, but a reading below 90 means that you're flying impaired, and a reading in the 70s can render you unconscious in minutes. When the pulse oximeter drops below 85%, the red and blue temperature warning lights on the panel will flash alternately to warn you of the condition. I'm not going to discuss setting and managing the pressurization system in this video because similar systems have been covered in other Black Square videos. However, keep in mind that on the new tablet interface, you can watch the safety valve and outflow valve move with the pressurization controller, and they will turn red if they become jammed. If you want more information on the temperature control and pressurization systems in this aircraft, don't forget to check out the manual that comes with the product. It's over 160 pages and still growing. It's a virtual tutorial on flying complex high-performance aircraft and delivers much of the content in a narrative fashion. There will also be more videos on Black Square's Dukes for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.